So this is John Gluckman up in Vancouver. I'm a retired uh, doctor of chiropractic. I've communicated with Dr. Aran several times about uh, his product, and uh, tonight I just want to uh, introduce um, him to all of you on the phone. He is um, very soft-spoken. He's very kind with his time. He'll spend as much time as we want in terms of answering some questions. Some of you have sent in some questions. I've sent them along to him. But we're going to get started. So if you're okay with me just throwing a couple of questions that came out from the field, we'll, we'll, we'll take a few minutes with that. And then if we still have some time, uh, we might open up the call and see if there's anybody out there that would like to say hi to you and ask some other questions. So the first one that had come in was, um, can Emulin help someone who has blood clots? Well, you know, that's pretty interesting. I would like to okay. say, first of all, that uh, mm -hmm. as a researcher, you have to have some specialty, and mm -hmm. I'm not a specialist in every disease, far from it, but I do know something about inflammation and some of the subsequent pathways that are involved. And it's very interesting because uh, in blood clots, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's thrombosis, mm -hmm. I wonder if you knew this, that over half of all Americans will die from a blood clot in either their brain or their heart. That's really the underlying technical cause of what happens when you say heart failure, right. cardiac arrest, etc. Or stroke. stroke. They're all the same. Yeah, stroke. Yeah, exactly. It's actually a blood clot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's not been any human studies on uh, emulin in this area, but uh, I do know that... Um, a couple of them, they're quercetin and mericetin, two of the products which come from dark grapes, dark berries, particularly tropical um, grapes. They did some studies on uh, monkeys, dogs, and mice, as well as some computer modeling, and they found out that um, there's a compound that's, uh, that I do know a little bit about of. It's PDIs, protein disulfide isomerase, it's very essential for the, for, um, to develop uh, clots to have this chemical show up. And what happens is the body produces this uh, enzyme, and the result is uh, clotting. Okay. So they gave... Uh, uh, Maricid and quercetin that they had gotten from grape juice to these animals and uh, reduced and initiated uh, cl blood clots, and it was greatly reduced. So this okay. goes, goes back to this overall theory that we're developing. We have these issues because we're not getting enough in our diets. Uh, I cannot even begin to claim that amylin will stop you from having strokes and things like that. But what I can right. say is it's going to reduce the uh, PDI factor, which therefore, logically, should reduce clotting. Lots of right. these diseases. There's something going back with polyflavonoids. These are what we're talking about here. Polyphenolics, polyflavonoids, right. which uh, maricid and corset and chlorogenic acid are. They are essential to our diet, and we just not recognize it. Everybody says, yes, eat fresh fruits and vegetables, which is where they come from, but we really don't know why. We talk about vitamin C and a couple of others that we get, vitamin A, but it's so much more than that. There's a whole host of molecules that we need to be getting that we're not getting enough, and we can't get enough because they're diluted. There's not nearly as many of these in a, in a current day blueberry as there was 10,000 years ago. Even heirloom varieties a hundred or so years ago, they've been bred out, they're gone. So right. it just listen to all your mothers, eat some healthy fruits and vegetables. It will do good for you all, for everything, including thrombosis. Okay, well that, that should give that person who has some comfort to go ahead and yes. give it a try. There's no harmful effect, uh, from what I understand, there's no contraindications 
for emulin with anything that I've heard of so far. Is that is that your understanding? Yes, that's true because uh, your body will will not take any more in than uh, 750 milligrams, and if it does, it just you eliminate it through the skin or through the urinary tract. And sure. there's no uh, contraindications because it doesn't. There's no drug interactions, and. Exactly. Uh, 750 milligrams is not much, and okay. that's one of the reasons we set it at that. Yeah, you could never so-called overdose on flavonoids. Uh, then another question here. What about uh, the benefit for someone with polycystic kidney disease? Maybe you can tell us what that is very briefly and, and tell us if you think that people can benefit from that. Well, I surely know something about kidneys because... Uh, that's about blood and circulation and carbohydrate sure. metabolism and various other things. Uh, PKD is, uh, we really don't know what, what is the underlying cause. We know what happens, but we don't know the underlying mechanism except to say that it's genetic. Okay. And, uh, I don't know, somewhere around three-fourths of people that are on dialysis for an extended period of time, four, five, six years, they also develop this uh, kidney disease. What happens is uh, cysts. Now, cysts are little hard, hollow nodules filled with yeah. the water. But right. it's like sand. And you develop them, and they get, some are very large. And eventually, if you keep developing enough, you disrupt the kidney, and it physically tears the kidney apart. That's the main wow. reason. It's not like... Uh, where you have uh, a, uh, an, an infection or a metabolic breakdown. This is a physical tearing of the kidney, and it originally, eventually leads to uh, kidney failure. Now, okay. what happens when you have this hollow pit, pieces of sand? I'm not implying that there's silica in your, your kidney, but you can imagine this hard, gritty cyst yeah. that are tearing your tissue apart what is the body going to do? Inflammation. Absolutely. Yes. And then you get a secondary route of failure. So oh you get goodness. the physical failure from just pure physical disruption, and then you also get uh, chronic inflammation, <laughs> which then also leads to other problems in the kidneys. So, <clears throat> you know, how are cysts... And you'll into the right well. Yes, yes, of course. It's so... If people listen to me long enough, yes, carbohydrates right. are really important, but it's inflammation is the real culprit. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's called uh, cystic fibrosis transmembrane uh, conductive regulatory factor. How about that? Wow. Okay. But that okay. particular enzyme is definitely inhibited by mericitin. We know that okay. for an absolute fact. Okay. And people that have taken uh, uh, mericitin in some preliminary studies, very preliminary, have less cis formation. So we don't understand that mechanism, but we can say there's less cis formation. And then once the inflammation is under control and there's less cis being formed, then your body can step in and heal itself. But particularly anyone in dialysis, this would seem to be indicated as a preventive of cyst formation. 